Hey guys, EUIC just finished up, absolutely insane tournament, Tord made it happen again, got the W with his Charizard DX, winning $25,000 in cash, absolutely insane, you guys see that, that's insane, $25,000 in cash for playing a card game, no wonder these players are playing at the highest level, beautiful list, we're going to talk about it, we're going to also talk about the top 16 list, so let's go. We'll discuss uh, towards uh, listen the final uh, at the end of the video, so stay tuned with us. But we'll jump to number sixteen here. We have Andres David. He ran the middle deck. Oh, I'm so mad. There's so much control -y decks now, but we're gonna have to cover them and look through and make sure we know how to counter them. I don't know how Charizard EX made it so high into the finals. It just shows you that towards just the master of this game. But it's it's just such a tough matchup for them with all this control. So let's look at it. Four Roaring Moons. You guys know what this guy does. He attacks big. Uh, I assume you run a bunch of Ancients, right? So no Ancients, though. Uh, Dunspar is just kind of uh, digs. You can also dig with Dunspar again. A Roaring Moon. Greninja and Iron Moon. What, what deck is this? I guess this is a Roaring Moon deck with the Dodden Sparse. What? I've never seen anything like this before. What? Gets Nest Balls, Trekking Shoes, Explorer's Guidance, a bunch of Ancient Cards, a lot of Ancient Capsules. And I guess they just keep pushing and punching and s s spitting in your face with as much as power as they can. They have to attach once and then Professor Sada and then his Roaring Moon is active. And then I guess he can dr keep drawing with the Dodden Sparse. Pretty interesting. Can also stall out the game a little bit with his dig. Very interesting idea. Wow, guys. <laughs> it, it, I mean, this is insane. This is Temporal Forces meta. We're going to see amazing decks like that. I'm so happy Thornton's still with us. We get to play the game and make some amazing amazing things happen. Especially with Roaring Moon. Makes sense that you would Thornton. But yeah, guys, very interesting. Let's move on. We got number 15 here. Future Iron Hands. Uh, f with Solomon. Iron Crown. EX. The one that does 20 extra damage also has on attack 50 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Iron Hands at three, Maradon here. Peak Acceleration Maradon, the one that wins your pre releases. <laughs> Iron Bundle and then Mew EX at one. Wow, very interesting. Lots of future Pokemon. The idea is you get uh, the Iron Hands to attack. So, how does he attack now? I want to see how he's going to be able to turbo attach himself. Techno Raider is pretty good. Oh, Electric Generator. That's how he Torbo attaches for himself with the Electric Generators. So I guess you use Arvins. Yep, Arvins at four. Electric Generator for four times. Do you have any way to bring back your Electrical Generators? No, but you do have the Heavy Baton to pass around your energies, which is pretty good. There's a lot of ways for you to control this deck. You can get rid of its Heavy Batons. Slow it down. You can uh, kind of uh, shove down the the unretreatable iron hands into the active spots <laughs> for retreat cost. You can do a lot of things to counter this deck. Let mess with it around, but it's it's really cool. It's really nice to see this future Pokemon meta. Future Pokemon, of course, is gonna be really strong with the Techno Radar. It's just such a broken card. One card brings you two Pokemon, it's so broken. It can be any Pokemon, it can be evil, basic. It's just so good. They just have to be future. It's so good with the Prime Catcher, Counter Catcher. Uh, meta, I know you run boss, but you still need the counter catcher, I believe, especially when we see Iron Bundle here. So we know he, for some reason, doesn't like to see the... What is the Iron Bundle for? Is that for... The... What, what you call that? Flutter, Flutterman? I don't know. If it's not for Flutterman, then the counter catcher is just for gameplay. Okay, interesting. I thought... Because Iron counter catcher is just for Flutterman in my deck, but yeah, anyways... Moving on, we got Giratina Lost Box. Giratina is still making it big waves with the Temple of Sino instead of your Path to the Peak normal order. Four Comfy, three Giratina, three Giratina V-Star. Spirit Plume is really good here. 
I mean, Mew is not a thing to worry about anymore. I don't think you need Spirit Tombs anymore, but it does shut down the Luminions, slows down these Charizard DX decks that run the Luminions and Rotoms, and does help you that out a little bit. We got Radiant Greninja, Manaphy, Iron Leaves for the Gren uh, Charizard matchup and the Cram only at one. I'm actually always hesitant to play Cram, Cram at one. Cram at one, especially because you always want to attack with him turn one, but you know, a lot of decks figured it out. So this deck actually likes to attack with the Greninja. We see three water energy. And then you see four Colrus, two rocks and one boss. Uh, four nest, four mirage, three buddy poffins. Really interesting. Does he run Artisan? No, but he does run one rescue board, one prime catcher, one counter catcher. No iron bundle, by the way, for the Flutterman. So very interesting. I guess he goes for the Giratina V Abyss Seeking. Yeah, this deck actually counters Flutterman better than the Roaring Moon deck. Because you do get to Abyss Seeking. Switch card with switch, really cool, and then the Pokey Gears, really cool, I mean honestly the deck still makes a lot of big waves, it counters uh, a lot of uh, prominent decks like those control -E decks, has a good matchup against the Greninja, especially with the Iron Leaves EX, can do a lot of work, so it makes sense that this deck's still making it, and we did see it in the finals as well, so let's move on, Charizard Pidgeot, Two Charmander, two Charmander Ember, the Charmeleon, Pidgeot, Pidgeot, Pidgeot EX, no B Barrels, no Bidoofs, two Rotoms, wow. And then a Radiant Charizard, wow. A Mist Energy here, four Arvin, two Boss, two Iona, one Eerie, one Roxanne, so much control here, guys. Because once you set up two Charizard EXs, you can do whatever you want. So you can control a little bit. Two Contra Catchers, so no Prime Catcher. Where's the Prime Catcher? He runs Maximum Belt. Wow. Has a better matchup versus other Charizards. Has strong matchup against a lot of good strong decks early on. Really interesting. He actually went for the Maximum Belt and he made it happen. He made it happen at a really high level. Only three body poppins as well. Something else I noticed. Moving on. Another Lost Zone box. This one is a Lost Zone box. I really believe in this deck. Let's see how many crams he's running. Only one. Only one Roaring Moon as well. One right. I mean, he doesn't have more attackers like Raikou and Iron Hands, but that's scary that you're only running one. And also Hoopa, Energy Crush. This deck does 54 energy attack to all your opponent's Pokemon. Wow. That's really good. That's really good. And it doesn't hurt you because you're running Darkness. This deck actually runs Greninja and not Charizard. A really interesting deck. Four energy, four, three water, and then Buddy Poffins with the Lost Vacuum, the Rescue. I think Rescue Board that one for comp phase is actually enough, but you do want to run more switches and switch card. Yeah, seven or eight, because then you get controlled. Very cool deck, guys. He does run the Artisan at two, so no Pokestops. A lot of people write, like to run Pokestops, especially with a big number of trainers, but no Pokestops here. Moving on, Ancient Box, wow. Koraidon, Fluttermane, Radiant Green Ninja, and Roaring Moon. Tough deck, guys, to beat. Fluttermane does a lot of control. Koraidon can push a lot of damage very early, and the Roaring Moon as well. Wow, and then you just run a bunch of Ancient, as much Ancient as you can. You can see here, four Earthen Vessels. Four of every Ancient card. Awakening Drum, also you run that. Four Ancient Boosters. As much Ancient as you can run, you run. And you try to toss those into the trash with the Explorer's Guidance. Really cool deck. Another deck here. Future Iron Hands. Another Future Iron Hands. Uh, this one is running Iron Lazy X for the uh, Charizard matchup. Did better a little bit. The Simone deck. Four Professor's Research. Four Arvins. Uh, heavy Baton at one. Three Capsules. One Counter Catcher. One Prime Catcher. And four Electrical Generators, of course. So... There's nothing crazy, no, nothing special that we're doing here. We're just having to draw into the heavy batons and to the electrical generator. We don't have like a a penny or what's that P, P supporter that we used to run that gives a, discards our whole hand for two more electrical generators. We don't have that anymore. There's Gardevoir. Oh my god, I thought we we're done with the Gardevoirs. No, we're not. We see Clefiki. 
Mimikyu, Greninja, Drifloon, and Fluttermane. Oh my god, how do you do this? This is insane. This made it to top 9. Oh my god, no... No Gardevoir, baby Gardevoir. That's amazing. You still made it happen with this deck. No level balls either. Still made it happen with this deck with the Ultra Ball. Only three Ultra Balls. Wow, I'm so surprised. Oh, that makes sense. You're running Team Evos. That makes so much sense. Yeah, that makes so much sense now. Because you do get to attach every turn. So you run Arvin to Team Evo. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. And then you can go for... Oh, but you don't get even Mirage Step. So you have to go <laughs> one by one. Damn, he made it happen, guys. Damn, this is a good deck. If you're still thinking about Gardevoir, I'm, I thought it was Dunzo. But yeah, it's still doing really good. Snorlax Control with the Luxury is doing really, really good. This tournament, this deck is just going to be a hell for me. This deck is the only reason I don't plan char play Charizard DX. So if you guys want to look at it, if you need a deck, there for the Snorlax, there it is. Roaring Moon, Dun Sparse. That's crazy that Dun Sparse is actually a big thing now. Dun Sparse just lets you draw three, I guess. It's not a bad way to draw three. Takes some time, takes two turns, but you draw the three. Really, really cool. I, I mean, you could run a Roaring Moon. Takes you some time, you have to attach. It's really easy for the opponent to map, it, map you out, but... I mean, you can do it. You can do it with the baby moon or the big moon, and you can do a lot of damage. And you have all the draw engine right here with the dozen sparse. That's crazy. And you have a green engine as well for your second draw engine. Really cool. But you have to run a bunch of ancient cards. So you run every ancient card you you want. Maybe more roaring moons even. Then the future iron hands is just going up and up. Six places, future iron hands. Wow, these decks are just doing so good. They have strong matchups against everything. Iron hands is a strong matchup against anything. And then you get iron, iron crown for the pesky stuff that slow you down. I'm just surprised. You need a lot of switching for this deck. Let me see how many switches is he running. No switching. I don't see a single switch. What? So what is he doing? He's literally retreating. I see one prime catcher. Yeah, he's just retreating. So this deck really does get, get held up by the Snorlax, doesn't it? Maybe it doesn't because it's freaking Iron Hands. You cannot hold up on Iron Hands. But oh my god, so it cannot retreat. That's crazy. How does this even beat control? It just doesn't. It doesn't beat control, I think. I don't see a way for him to beat control. Very interesting. I can't believe he made it this far. Another future hands. Can he beat control? Yeah, we see one switch. <laughs> Wait, what? Then I'm just gonna play my Charizard. If one switch is all we need. I mean, I, I know they have their capsules, but what? Are you kidding me? So Snorlax is not a big deal anymore? How can we... I'm surprised that we can run the whole... Get to 5th place with... With one switch card. I don't see a single other way that he can re retreat. Doesn't have 2 row. So you just need 2 switch cards. 1 switch card, 1 prime catcher is all you really need now against the control. Really? That's crazy. Okay, moving on. Charizard EX at f fourth place. Nothing special here, just a Cleffa. Very similar to Tord's deck. Very similar to Tord's deck. Tord has a couple more pieces. Very similar though. Six energy, two super rods, two contra catchers. Oh, this one has TM Devos. I don't think he, his has any TM Devos. And then the Arvins. Wow. Does run the two rows. Now everyone's running two rows. Also, Charizard is now running uh, Eerie. Oh, wow, this one's running Maximum Pet Belt. So that's why the two, two Contra Catcher, no Prime Catcher. That makes sense now. Also, we don't run in Defiance Belt because we have the Maximum Belt now. I'm not sure we actually like the Maximum. I think the 
Prime Catcher is better now, but we'll see. Okay, number three, PGA Control. No Snorlax, no Bat. Oh my god. This control deck is just going. Brrr. Oh, I'm so mad that control is everywhere. Look at this one Defiance Band, one TM the Evil, um, three Palpads, one Silene, Backup, Thornton. So, so tough to play against. Then we have the real decks here Isaiah's uh, Lost Box with the Banet EX. Really cool. I think he has a certain matchup that he really likes to play this. Shupet also, Cheap Retreat. I thought he was free retreat. Turns out he's not. Only one cram. I was surprised by this. Especially because you run cram turn one every single game. Yeah, like I said, I saw his deck. I was like, okay, I don't think he actually runs the Greninja. Because there was a game, uh, there was a turn where he could have won the whole game if he attacked with the Greninja. And he, I just never seen a single water. So yeah, he just does not run a single water energy. You can see a lot of people ran this deck. Even Rahul Reddy and John Eng. So the best players in the world ran this deck. Four Culverus, one Boss, one Roxanne, four Mirage Gate, four Nest Ball, three Switch. That's it. Wow. That's it. Two Buddy Poffin, two Super, one Ultra Ball, one Ultra Ball? Wow. One Counter Catcher, Prime Catcher, Poke Gear, Four Steel Stone, Temple Sino, and Art is on. Really crazy deck. Lots of one offs. Did, a, did so much work, guys. I think he made $10,000 or $15,000. Really, really good job getting second. And then the $25,000 Charizard deck is here. Pidgeot with Bidoof, with the Kalefa. Wow, such a strong deck, deck there, guys. The Farnings Belt and Choice Belt over the Maximum Belt, but we do get one Counter Catcher, one Prime, two Super Rods, four Buddies, the Team Yell Cheer, shovel up to three combination of any cards. Really smart idea there, especially if you don't have enough Super super Rods. And because Clara's not really in the game anymore. And then two rows scenarios is only Switch. He doesn't have Switch. He has the Prime Catcher and then two two, two rows. That's all he gets. Really amazing gameplay, guys. We saw the finals. Go check out the finals, guys. It's in the in the channel. We just uh, show, uh, checked out the finals. We're going to upload the video. But yeah, guys, really interested in your opinions. Tell me what deck was the best deck. What were you excited about the most? I'm actually really surprised. There's so much control. Also surprised by these Roaring Moon, Dutton Spars decks that are very simple, yet they do so much work. Interested in your opinions, guys. Leave them down below.